the news come right in to stump the chumps july edition same game same name easy for you to say yeah but uh what do you call this show al what have we uh decided to do for this month well if johnny carson and ed mcmahon can do it we're gonna every year in review her oh we're gonna look back on our we had a one-year anniversary last year we got no cake we got nothing actually. i see no picture on the screen right now i hope we're still on but i imagine we are we okay, have the graphics got, over here. Graphics. Watch what you're saying. We're going to cut away, folks, for about 16 minutes of pre-filmed intro for our show. Uh, and then we'll be back and await your phone calls uh, to give us some questions. We've got some swell surprises for good answers to our questions and from good questions from you. And by the way, look at that hairdo. Look at that hairdo. Well, I didn't think yours. you noticed. Oh, I did. I saw the uh, reflection of mine off your skull. Yeah, well, okay. Hold so on. We can take care of that. So my good friend, Walter Wood at Metropolitan Hair. He did a terrific you job. You can't say that on Walter. the air, Herb. Well, I just did. Here, how's that? <laughs> Makeup. And we need more uh, support from sponsors in the way of goods and services. And we gladly accept them and we'll pass on such to our viewers. So we'll be back. Uh, in about 16 minutes, as I said, we hope you enjoy the tape, and then you'll come back and you'll play live with us, Stump the Chumps. You went off five seconds too soon, Herb. Well, I'm close enough. <laughs> we are at the beginning, if you can believe it, folks, of the Stump the Chump program that will be aired on Wednesday, July 8th. But we're here on July 3rd at the corner of Main and South Union Streets in front of Memorial Auditorium. And I am providing my services here for the young couple here, Walter from Boston and Corinne, where are you from? Cape Cod. Cape Cod, both from Massachusetts, come up here to northern New England and want to start life for themselves and have agreed to be married in front of Channel 17's audience. And this will be on tape. So you can come in and get a copy of it. Uh, Walter and Corinne, and I'm serious, I am a, the official justice of the peace. And I selected a short poem here. It's called On Your Wedding Day. But a voice is floating round me, and it tells me in my rest that sunshine shall illume thy path, that joy shall be thy guest, that thy life shall be a summer's day whose evening shall go down like the evening in the eastern clime that never knows a frown. When thy foot is at the altar, when the ring hath pressed thy hand, when those you love and those that love you weeping round you stand, O oh, may the rhyme that friendship weaves like a spirit of the air be o'er thee at that moment for a blessing and a prayer. I'll ask you, Walter, do you promise Corinne that from this day onward, she will be your wife, and you will stand with her in sickness and in health, in joy and sorrow, and do you pledge to her your respect and your love? Yes, I do. All right. You're not exchanging rings. You don't have to. Jewelry and, get, and jewels are just not gifts, but merely apologies for gifts. The only true gift is a portion of yourself. So, we don't really need any witnesses, but we do have our cameraman who is filming this. A lot of people will be witnessing. A lot of people will be witnessing this Wednesday. Therefore, by the power vested in me, according to the laws of the state of Vermont, but most of all, by the power of your own love, I do now pronounce and declare you to be husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Congratulations to both of you. A long and happy married life together. We just stopped on his noon hour, and he's been gracious enough to donate some of his time to us. And his uh, burger here is getting cold. George Rowland, a I local don't. of uh, now about, what, 20 years, George? 22 years. Son yeah. of a gun. From across the lake over at Plattsburgh. Right. You cannot stump this guy on sports trivia. He knows his stuff. He's been official scorer for many softball teams, well, basketball Herb, leagues. Pitching record. He doesn't know that. He's before my time. <laughs> it's engraved in granite somewhere. Uh, Tombstone for somebody. George, right. we're looking for Church Street trivia. And you were telling me a couple of things you might throw out here for our okay, audience. Okay, I picked up this in the last time we had a trivia contest. Uh, you mentioned the old A&W on Church Street. 
Right. And you mentioned Lewings after that, which it is now. But what place was it in between, the A&W and Lunings? Right, it was another uh, fast food type of thing, sit-down right. diner. What was the name of that one? That's a good question, That's George. A question for you. Uh, it was owned by a softball player. A good one, good little hint there. Yeah. Uh, anything else on Church Street that uh, sticks out for a trivia-type question? Yes. Um, okay, where was Jean's, oh man, how would that go down? Where was Jean's North located at the time of the fire on Church Street? And they had to relocate across the street. Good question. Good question, George. I know. I know. Uh, our cameraman knows, but uh, those are two good questions to start off. Does he know the address number? No, he doesn't know that. Oh, here's one. Got the burning shorts out of the we'll put this one on the <laughs> tape, Al. I want to know, this is subjective, folks. Who was the meanest guy behind the, uh, well, the booth there in the post office where, you know, uh, where Courthouse Square is now on Main Street? The old post office building, who was the meanest guy why behind the think, counter? Why did you think he was meaner? Because he would throw stamps at you, and if you were lucky, he'd throw change <laughs> back at you. And then, 10 people could be waiting in line, and he would get great pleasure from slapping that sign with the arrow saying, yes. next counter. <laughs> you could be ever, waiting there forever. Did he ever relocate to the new post office location? Uh, I don't believe so, but he is around the area. He writes letters to the editor. Lives in Essex, if that's a clue to our audience, the one I'm thinking of. You may have your own personal choices. Somebody, George, uh, uh, way back here uh, at Courthouse Square, that was used to be Strong Hardware Company, located on the corner, before your time. I'm asking our audience, name three longtime employees of Strong Hardware Company. No relation to Strong Theater at all? Oh, well, obviously in the Strong Block, okay? That was okay. the name of the building. I want to know three tenants that had offices in the strong block building. What the? Well, now we have succeeded in turning that hot bun of yours into a <laughs> ice cold product. We never got a definitive answer when they okay. closed Church Street um, to I traffic. Quit, I quit working at Andre's in 81. Where yeah. was Andre's? There's a good one. Where was Andre's located on Andres Church Street? Street? <laughs> Church Street. Now, Andre's closed in 81, so it was before 81. You're talking maybe 79, 80? Maybe early 81. I say late 80, early 81. There's George's guess, and I, I don't know. I don't argue with him with batting averages or uh, field goal percentage of shooting. So okay, no. thanks again no, for no, joining no, us. No, no, Why? No, no, you no, want? No. I want him to answer this one. Okay. Question from the cameraman. Yeah. Okay. Who, is the, who was the most obnoxious softball manager of all time? Come on, immediately that comes okay. to mind. He's still alive walking these streets. Give him out the name. <laughs> WB, yep. give it out. <laughs> Mr. It. Wayne Berto, there it is. Without any hesitation at all. Oh. All right, again, okay. George, thanks for joining us. We yep, appreciate I see it. Herb, Al. <laughs> so long. So long, George. Good luck driving people up the street. Huh? We're rolling. Okay. Ironically enough, I asked the question about who was the meanest guy working in the old post office at the counter. And who do we encounter on North on we'll Church we'll Street? Uh, mailman. Well, no, he's the one. He never I gets his. Yeah, but you never get the whole route complete in time, sir, because you're always stopped by all the young lovelies walking up and down this on your route. PR, PR. It's important. He does a good job for the post office. The this is uh, Peter Akey, the brother of Mark Akey, or I should say, Mark Akey is Peter's yes, brother. Yes. yes. Trivia question for uh, Church Street: We want to know the name of the establishment that was located where Ake's place is now. Church Hills. Ooh, you think that's right? I don't know. I don't know either, but you it was a know. bar, right? If it See, was a bar. He gave out a quick response. He probably is wrong. <laughs> he knows. I got to go. Don't yeah. put this on the air. <laughs> yes. Don't kill it. Yes. Really? No. Yeah. See you. My hero. <laughs> Nobody, I am not I'm worthy. worthy. <laughs> I am not worthy. How many did you pick up last night, you son of a Alex, my second here. Thank you. Yeah, well, while you're filling your orders, we want you to think of a nice trivia question. This is Stump the Chumps on Church oh, Street. Stump the Chumps? Yeah, stump oh boy, the I'm Chumps. A big one. So, no, no. We want to know about some buildings or people or nicknames of some of the old locals here. Can you think of any questions that would stump our audience? I know you could provide some interesting stories about some... Many years ago, was in the Capitol Stationer's building. Beautiful. That's the type of question we want. That's the type you want, okay. Yeah. How about...
Who has a record for eating the most hot dogs in one sitting right here? <laughs> Is, could you name one person, you think? Not one person, no, because I have had young people stand and come back for six or seven. I have no idea who they are. Wow. No idea at all. Should we check with the medical center? What's that? Yeah. Should we check with the medical center to see who they were? <laughs> they don't know. Now, I notice you also, at no extra charge, uh, provide entertainment with some uh, music in the background. Uh, tootling, we call it tootling, tootling, yes. Yeah, tootling. Uh, any resemblance between actual melodies and his renditions are purely accidental. Is that correct? I refuse to comment. Any famous section of town? You just filming? You're going to ask? I'm, well, I'm still rolling here. Well, then we could ask our viewers to come up with the names of what businesses used to be located here in this area of Church Street. It's the block where, we, uh, by the way? Okay, where one, where we well, you know where we are here. In front of Woolworths? Yeah, in Burlington Square. Mm -hmm. What businesses used to be in here? Any stories about, like to know actual con, uh, positions? Well, you remember where you had to go to find uh, the uh, the photography section where you went to get pick up your pictures in Woolworths? What part yeah. of the store? Yeah. Well, they usually they had a section in, a, in this particular part of the store. They used to tint pictures. Uh, you didn't have color photography back in the old days, but they used to hand tint pictures for you. Where was that section of the store? Where did you buy fresh peanuts? Part of the store. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, any machines that you remember? Where was the popcorn and <laughs> what kind of root beer was it in Christie's? Okay, good question. I know. That's uh, a nice shot of the side of your head, you know, there. Now I'll move. Should we should we just let the tape run on this music here for a while? Or? Are you calling that background music? <laughs> Give me a break. Yes, sir. Quite a rendition that's being played right now. You want to just engage in people watching. This is the place to do it. Well, I think we're going to sit here for a minute, Herb, and just maybe we'll just do that. Watch. Talking with Tom Crosby. No one more knowledgeable about this area than Tom. Except her Blumenthal. Oh, I don't know. Compared to you, I'm a mere puppy. Well, let's not brag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's get right to it. Some trivia questions for our audience here of Stump the Chumps. We're on Church Street between uh, Bank and Cherry Streets. Uh, and I hope our cameraman can uh, pan in around the variety. Pan in. Pan in on these various storefronts. Storefronts. Tom, you could name, back into the 50s, all the existing businesses starting at the corner of Woolworths, proceeding down toward Bank Street on the west side. Uh, we could ask our viewers that. What? Right. Yep. Sure. There's, uh, of course, the Woolworth building there that's mm -hmm. there now is a, a a new one compared to the old uh, style right. building. Then there was a which we discussed before we went on um, the air a, a store in between, which neither of us can remember oh, the right. name of it. Then the opening to the mall was the old Kresge's, later followed by their cheaper line Jupiters. Correct. And now we want you to make it in the form of a question. We don't want to give all oh, the answers. Oh, you don't want to give me answers. 
Uh, okay. But we can give them the type of business. Of some of these in here. Uh, what, what was the store next to Kresge's? Beautiful. Which you uh, mm -hmm. corrected me on. Okay. Further on down here, there used to be some other stores. Well, right next to what is now called the pub. Yeah. Um, our right was a little magazine store, Colette's. Yeah, you're giving the answers again, oh, Tom. I'm guilty. But right next to Colette's, there was a flower shop. We want to know the name of the flower shop. Right. On the other side of Colette's, there was a photography store. We want to know the name of that. Right. Now, Kelly's has always been there, and legend has it that the owner was a large gentleman and that, I don't know, they made some special accommodations for him when he went over to the State Theater to view some films. So, uh, anybody got any stories about that? Tom, you have another beautiful story. Uh, apparently... Where was Bailey's located before they moved to Church Street? I didn't know this one. Not at all. Had another one about Magrams. What was the store that was in Magrams prior to World War II? Before the fashion shop and the follow-on Magrams. Finally, and this is very subjective. Who is the worst <laughs> musician that you have heard perform on Church Street in the last five years? Is there any possibility of my getting sued? <laughs> no, no, no. With what particular, not naming the individual, what yeah. instrument was being attempted to be played? The flute, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst one. Uh, how about, you've heard a lot of uh, stories from individuals roaming through our community. Any one particular uh, person stick out in your memory as being a left field the furthest, you think? Oh, I can't think of any at the moment. How about the one that was on with us right before we went on camera here? Oh, the gentleman that came down the street. Shook the hands with me. What did he say he was? The owner of the New York Times. And you replied? I replied he owns one copy of the New York <laughs> Times, and that's it. Here we are on the 3rd of <laughs> July, and we see them all. Right here on Church Street. Thanks very much, Tom. Are you talking about me? Look pretty. Where did I get the pool table out? <laughs> Look pretty. Is that going to be on TV? We are back again. Right on time, right on schedule. Beautiful. And we're here until about five minutes of seven, if all goes well. But it's up to you folks. We can't stand here talking with each other. We'll be at uh, uh, more than just words in about five minutes. But Al, I'm going to give you the opportunity of, uh, first of all, plugging your own up and coming programs. I wish I could remember what we called it. Well, what was the first one called? You know well, that. We're doing public service announcements for the fire department and trying to uh, inform the, the, the public on what the, uh, the policies of the fire department. Uh, the latest one is uh, why you see a fire truck when you call for an ambulance and uh, this whole thing. And sirens in the streets been running for what, a, a month now on that? I don't know. You don't know. I got a he headache doesn't. from listening to those sirens, I'll tell you that. I wish it would stop and run your second one already. But as soon as I remember what we call the second one, which will be showing uh, probably next week. Yeah. Um, I'm getting nervous, you know. The phones aren't ringing. We need questions. Well, you haven't explained we this answers. new set design. They haven't even noticed we yet. We got hats. We got banal. We got Herf, what? You haven't mentioned the, the new set oh, design here. Oh, spare me. It's so startling. It's, it's what? It's six minutes right. old. It's, well, it's, the, uh, it's number 17 on the new Russian flag that you're trying to design here. Yeah, well, if anybody can come up with a country that would use this as their flag, <laughs> uh, that's worth a couple of cases of banal. I hope these stars keep falling, don't keep falling off here. Now, uh, for your uh, viewing pleasure, we have uh, had our uh, technical crew. Reba has been responsible for running on crawl some of nostalgia for us. That might give you some uh, inspiration as to frame some questions for us. And we can also uh, turn that around and give some questions to you. You said uh, you had some unanswered questions from the past programs also. Why well, don't you start? As you probably know because you were here, uh, the onset of this show, uh, we had very few viewers because we were only on for 15 minutes. Our first show, nobody knew we were on, and we went for a half an hour. But some of our better questions were asked to people when there might have been only three people watching. 
Plus, people forget, and uh, we have, we're remiss in not giving all the answers to questions, and we may still not. You're remiss. I keep reminding you every month, right. but no, I we know. don't ever give yeah. the answers. So, so we're going to ask. We're going to ask some questions. Uh, some of the ones that uh, were never answered. Look, look at this. These bright colors of the hats that we want to give away because the crack buyer at Mills and Greer, probably the <laughs> former buyer, <laughs> stuck them with these colors. But uh, I'm sure that our viewers will uh, love to have these lovely prizes. So. You took the tags off these, I think. Yes, yes I you did. did. You yeah. did well on the on okay. the break. So give them some examples of prior questions that were unanswered. I'm sorry, Herb, we have a caller already. Yeah. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, hello, in answer yeah. to Bailey's, uh, the Bailey's Music Store was on Bank Street. Is that true, Herb? I don't know. What, when, that's my mother now. What, what era was that? <laughs> what years? Around the time you were born. Oh, man. 1916. <laughs> 16, something 62. like that. <laughs> All right, Ma, you want a hat or so? What else do you oh, want? Wait a here? minute, I want to know where on Bank, where was it on Bank Street? It, it was uh, near the corner of Church Street. And did uh, they have listening on booths? the corner from where Megrams is, uh, Megrams used to be. Okay. And um, then the old Beehive was on Church Street, um, a couple of places away from Megrams. Yeah. That was uh, over around uh, 1942. All right. Now, Herb wants to know if they had listening booths in that, in that, uh, at Bailey's at that time. Did they have yes. the little listening booths where you could listen to the records yes, and stuff? Yes, they did. Okay. Oh, before you go now. No, because see, I'm going to ask her another one here. Yeah. We were discussing where you could go to make a record. I know during the war you could go to certain places oh, to yes. make a record. But didn't they have little booths where you could go in and, like the, like the photo booths? Yes, they had those. And uh, I used to go to USO yeah, and make right. little records. That's what Herb said. Yes, uh, that, that was also 1942, 1943. Before my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for calling. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, have we got another one here? No. Oh, there of course we, we do. I'll handle it on the air. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes? How do I win a hat? You have to stump us with a question of local trivia, or else you can answer one of ours. Which way you want to go for one? You want to answer a question from us? I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. At Battery Park? Yes, sir. How many different lights are there? How many different colors are there in the fountain? How many different colors? Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my TV. Yeah, yeah. can you turn it down turn a little Turn it down bit? a little bit. Now, I have to ask, is this before or after you've been smoking? Smoking, <laughs> smoking cigarettes? Well, whatever. <laughs> I'd say that there are uh, six. There are three colors. Well, like I said, after you're smoking, there's six. Oh, well, if I was seeing double vision. That's, yeah. hey, that's worth an, an orange hat there. That's one color of hat for you, sir. While we're on Battery Park, you remember the name of the fountain that was out on the breakwater? No idea. So you probably don't know how many colors there were on that, that fountain then. That'll be another question to the people out there. What was the name of that fountain, which is now rusting away down there at the yeah. salt dock? And what was its nickname? And also, you know there's a cannon down there in the park? Yes. How many did there used to be prior to 1942? Two. No, sir. Four. That's it. There were four. And how come there's only one now? Because they were stolen. No, what I take By a, a good uh, man, I'll tell you that. Boy, I guess so. Those were heavy. <laughs> they were uh, taken away uh, during the war for the war effort for scrap metal. Oh, see, see what you learn by listening and watching this show. Stump the jumps. Beautiful thing. Did you give him a hat? Yes, give I give him another one. Another one. Give him another. Balance hat. off the set. We got another. got it. Well, thank you for calling, sir. Let's go on here. Al. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. yes. On that fountain on the breakwater? Yes. That was uh, Mayor Cairns. Yeah. Put it up there. What, didn't they name it after him? Well, that's what nickname of it. It was called some by some who didn't like it. They call it Cairns Folly. Yeah, yeah. But it was the uh, Freedom Fountain. What was it called? The lip what the heck was Friendship it? Friendship Fountain. Friendship Oh, Friendship Fountain. Okay. I know it was Cairns. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do you remember Rhett's store and Humphrey's Blue store? Uh, I've heard of them. Uh, Humphrey's, yes. And Bailey's music room, I remember, was on Church Street. That's the only one I remember. My mother yeah. remembers the other one. Huh. Man, do you remember the stores that had vacuum uh, containers that took your money and your bill? Went up to the clerk's Went up office. to the clerk and it came back down again? Yes, that 
that was the old beehive. Was one of them. There were a few others. In Lewis and Pine. Ooh, there's one I didn't know about. Uh, Magrims had one in the uh, early 50s. Don't give me I don't one. remember. Well, this was, you know, in the 40s, 50s. Wow. Well, that's, gee, you, you're, uh, you're an astute listener and caller, ma'am. What would be your choice of color for a hat? Blue. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? wait a minute. You give her your choice of hat. You get the banal gear, you get the hospital well, strength banal. many hats, people can't see us. The <laughs> urinary tract infection <laughs> tapes? Ma'am, uh, here's a, do, would you happen Jeez. to know uh, anything about Champ? Have you ever cited Champ or know no. anybody that cited no. Champ? Do you put any credence into this uh, citing business at all? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, we lived near Battery Park, and we used to go over there a lot, mm -hmm. and never saw anything out there. And we used to be at North Beach, Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm wondering if... Saw anything in the lake. I'm wondering if there's any of our viewers that might know the name of the local resident. And this lady took a picture, and it was purchased by Life magazine, and they ran it in their magazine supposedly showing a picture of Champ in the lake. Oh, I think I remember hearing about yeah, that, but I don't know who it was. I'm wondering if anybody remembers that. Okay, Man, thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Uh, are we done we got here? somebody on too, do we? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Hello, you're on the air. Oh. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Herb. Get in Hello. the room. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I just wanted you to know that there's two things I'd like to speak to you about. Okay. First off, you could have records made at the Bischoff's Piano House, which is on North Avenue. Ooh. Oh, that is so. Did you ever have one made? Or your family ever have one made? No, but my mother and father did. Beautiful. And number two, I saw Franz Kramery on the overhead there. Yes. I remember a machine they used to have in there. Yeah. yeah I'll bet in fact, you. Al's friend. I know who has it. Yes. Howard Goldberg. That's right. It was his uh, grandfather's store. That is correct. But while I have you on the air, I want you to try to name for me the jeans store in the early 70s that had two locations in downtown Burlington. One was on what's regarded now as Trader's Way on North Winooski Avenue. Thanks, Sean Rowe. And then it moved over to where Apple Mountain is now. Well, what was that guy's name? Uh, what was his name and what was the name of that store? Glenn, Glenn, Glenn was his first name. That's it? And what was his store? Uh, just Jeans. Just Jeans? No, yep. just Pants. Just Pants? Pants Plus. Pants Plus. Just a minute. Just a minute, <laughs> Pants Plus. <laughs> Hold on to your pants. Okay, you there's a hat for Glenn. There's a hat for Glenn. Jeez. Thank you for calling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <sighs> Back to another line now. Well, wait a minute. You're, 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 I'm suffering with you tonight. Oh, <laughs> you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, that other vacuum uh, thing that carried the money up was Abernathy's. Yes, that's right. Uh, how about uh, giving me one on uh, North Street? This is my mother. Don't tell her I know. Okay. Well, now we're, we got both bases Shh. covered. Don't let her know I know. Do you remember, ma'am, a store on North Street <laughs> that had the same system? I think it had. There couldn't have been too many stores. And, on North Street that could qualify. No. Was it Mazel's? No. No. No, I don't know. But, Across uh, the road. Well, I, another thing I want that the uh, story you, you, that was there before uh, Mazel's, not Mazel's, uh, Magrams, yes. was that I.J. Reynolds? Absolutely right. Relative or not. Her bag's bothering her. Give her the hospital strength banal. Hospital strength banal. And be careful no, with this. Strength. The green bottle. The be green bottle. careful with this stuff. Now, yeah. this sounds like my mother, but it may not be. Okay. Yeah, if she drinks this, it won't sound like her. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because you may know this one, too. Because I, I, I come up with this uh, somewhere. Hospital. In my... Hospital strength banal. Don't okay. push it now. No. The last of the manually operated elevators on Church Street, mm -hmm. where you'd go in there, and the guy would open the door for you, and he'd close the screen, and he'd open the other door and the other door. And he'd push the buttons and take you up there. You remember where they were, the, the last ones were? Well, Magrams had one. You yes, spent a lot did. of time in Magrams, didn't you? What was the name of the operator? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't that friendly with him. <laughs> what did he call everybody? We. This is an old question. On our first I show, so. I think we did this one. No, I don't. The name of the operator, um, oh. the elevator operator, and the nickname he called everyone that went on the, oper uh, on the elevator. I don't know. Well, ma'am, you, you're always a fount of information. Thank you. Thank you for calling. But, All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have we got others, or we should go somewhere? Well, I want to explain something. Right. On our very first show. Yeah. 15 minutes. It seems this, like an hour. The biggest stump, and I may be my mother, but 
this wasn't an inside deal. There was a question when we ran the camera outside the window, yeah. and I'm sure that our, our lovely camera person now could kind of pan out the window there. Getting a view of uh, North North Avenue. Avenue. Next door, that building there yeah. housed three different organizations That's at the correct. same time under the same phone number back in the early 60s, late 50s. What were those organizations? What were those? And I, my mother called up and had them just like that. She can't call again. She can't Somebody call again. She cheated will. before. But at All that right. location, there was three different organizations going on at the same time under the same phone number in the book. You know, a true story, I guess, is when this studio first started and uh, the camera panning out the window, people in the whole area here thought this was some kind of a FBI observation <laughs> operation. <laughs> well, is right. that true, Nat? <laughs> Hello, this is Nat. the flag. Isn't that true? I don't know. I never you don't that. know. We've come a long ways. Nat wears shoes and everything now. Did you I notice know. that, Herb? All right. We're going again. Hello. Yeah, I got the three places that were right across the street there. I just asked them. I know. I got it right now. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, can, you, can, you TV, can you turn your TV down a little bit? Sure. Let me just get over here. In the sun. Or a lot. Be, uh, perhaps turn this down a little bit. Or, uh, yeah. We've got, or, this fella there. lives in the old north end, I can tell. Be, you got it, Bubby. Yeah, because I can hear his TV. Through. All right, you ready? Yep. Uh, with Adult World, uh, Chuckie's Cheesesteaks, and Villanova International. Oh, Do I have right. three buzzers? <laughs> what's, that, what's, that, what's that juice stuff you're selling? Juice, juice stuff? The juice stuff. Vanalg. <laughs> what's that? Vanalg, it's the all-purpose oh. lotion. The hospital right. strength. If you rub some on your head, you may be able to come up with a correct answer. Fast next vanishing time. lotion, it says, for arthritic pain. Seriously? Yeah. Gripes. It's like sending some of that my way. Yeah. There you go. There it is. <laughs> By golly. You uh, asked for it. You guys are crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, this is Popeye. Those aren't, the, those aren't the answers we were looking for. This is like in the late 50s, early 60s. Oh, uh, I ain't like that old man. <laughs> I have no idea. I thought this guy was right on. And, oh, yeah. You wish, man. Yeah. 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 You're yes, lucky sir. it'll come down there and take care of you, man. All right. <laughs> Next, Al. Please. Thanks a lot. Enough is too much in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Yep, got a question for Herb. Beautiful. Yeah, I can't answer those questions you just have, but I got That's a question it. for Herb. Good. Okay, uh, there used to be a restaurant on Lower Church Street yeah. called the Fresh Ground Coffee House. Correct. And they offered a luncheon special that was named after a Rolling Stones album. What was the name of that luncheon special? It cost two bucks. You got a cup of soup, a sandwich, and an apple, and a beverage. I have it, sir. What's that? It's called the Beggar's Banquet. There you go. See? And uh, by the way, Herb, right. that's a great haircut you have. Hey, Jeez. thank you very much. So you can thank the good folks at Metropolitan Hair for that. Right in the old Abernethy's building. And we want to know what was in that space. Wait a minute. The old I want to thank my wife for this haircut, <laughs> yes. which I got right after the dog got his the other night. <laughs> thank you very much for calling, sir. Thanks a lot. All right. You don't think of me at all, you know? Because I got a little hair problem here. You just we go want on questions. your own way. Never mind the personalities here. Jeez. We want questions. I want to know a starting lineup for the old Marola All-Star team. The amazing Marola All-Star. Right. But I want to know a starting lineup that played two consecutive games with the guys at the same positions and batting in the same order. Can't be done. Can't be done is correct. I challenge anybody <laughs> because that club never had, they had the most revolving roster I have ever seen. Can't be done, Herb. It's like uh, Donnie Bevan. But if somebody could come up with some standard names of the amazing Marola All-Star participants, they're yeah, going to win have a swell rolling, surprise a rolling here. tape there, yeah. <laughs> You've got a question. I do? I got a phone call. <laughs> yeah. You saved by the phone call. No, I don't have a phone call. Yeah, go ahead. Line one. All right. Well, I'll do that. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I got something for you. Yeah? Uh -huh. right. Okay, this is kind of a double stumper. Double Ooh. stumper. He's All from right. Massachusetts, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Now, down on Main Street. I mean, yeah. this is easy. You know where the ski rack is now, the new ski rack? Yeah. What used to be there? I mean, that's easy. Well, uh, they used to wear the old ski rack. Uh, oh, boy. A lot of watering holes down there. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Which one was it? Um, on the corner, was it called the Vals? No, 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 no. We're talking last year. Last oh, year. Oh, you know? wow. Our brains aren't programmed for less no, than no. 10 years ago. We go way back. We can't <laughs> go yesterday. You guys are just too old. Uh, you know, give us the answer, though. The front and the outback. Okay. I, I've been All right, now I'll back. go back farther. I'll go back farther. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Raise your hand if you're ready. In that same space you're talking? Yeah, well, right before, before it was front and the outback, what was it? Man. That's easy. No, see, we didn't, we never went there. That was after our drinking days here, Al, so this fellow's a young Our student. drinking days? <laughs> uh, give it, give <laughs> it to yourself. That guy still gets wasted, I know it. <laughs> what was the name of it? Clancy's. Clancy's, man, the, the, the place has come and go so quickly. He didn't know it. 
I stumped you. We're well, good. You did. Yeah. You did, my friend. You got yourself a nice hat. I want a green one. Ooh. I want a green one. That's green a, hat. The color. Matt. Mills and Greers are still uh, selling those. <laughs> they wouldn't give yeah, them to me. That color's still in. Yeah. I we, can uh, put some banalg on this black one. It probably <laughs> will turn it green. What is that crap? <laughs> well, excuse me, sir. That's, that's good this stuff. Is, this is top of the line. Just what don't, is it? Just don't drink much what? of it. It's a lotion, a rubbing lotion. It's uh, good for whatever. What is it, like doing, Joe? It's a uh, liquid. Uh, <laughs> Quiet, Herb. You're getting your foot in here. You're not listening to what he's asking okay. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Okay. Thanks, sir. We got to go. Thanks a lot. Nothing? Nothing. Questions? Well, I asked you one today. Of course, you knew the answers. What? Your folk store on Champlain Street. We all know where it is and everything. It went under. I told you not to. Well, we're gonna. I want to know the names of all those old stores. Well, just a minute. I'm blocked. doing this yeah. one first, okay? I told you not to, but go ahead. His, Herb's father's store had a name on the on the glass in the front and then on the, on the sign. It was also had its real name, and it also never went by a total name. other name. Never had the real name, but go ahead. It never had the real name, but there was three names. Yeah. In actuality, there was three names. Want to know what those are? And you wanted to go up and down those the, the streets here with the. Well, we don't know all of grocery stores, and they, they're flipping around here. There's, there's some clues here. One of the ones, well, we got a bunch of them on Church on Champlain yeah. Street and stuff, but nobody ever got the one that was on Manhattan Drive or North Bend Street, as it was called then, yeah. around the corner from Champlain Street. There was a little store tucked away there. Nobody ever got the answer to that one. You know, I, I want to go back to another more modern question. There are two, I asked the one on the tape, who was the meanest postal clerk? In the old, in the, well, the what? new post office and the old one. You're messing with the federal government I don't now, care right? who I mess with. Those guys mess with me every day I go over there, and I refuse to go to one that's at that current federal building, and he knows it, and I'm not alone. <laughs> and I want to know your opinion, folks. Who is the meanest mail clerk over there at one of those desks? <laughs> and who had the record of being the meanest Do you want to stand when the up? post office used to be at, on Main Street? You already okay. asked that. Yes, Thank I have God an answer. the phone's yet. ringing. We want some answers to those questions. Can you get us a soapbox out there? Uh, answer on the Hello, you're on the air. Yep, the guy at the post office is this bald guy with the beard. You got it. <laughs> and I wish somebody else would get him and get him away from dealing with the public. That guy has no <laughs> common sense of dealing with a John Q. public. That's right. Now, uh, but who's everybody the union does man. it to you. And I want to see if there are other people who agree or have <laughs> some other nomination. <laughs> Have you called before, sir? I think the, the voice is familiar. You yeah, have we talked about this before today. Yes, <laughs> indeed we did. Well, thank you for listening and calling, and now we want to hear what others have to say about that postal question. <laughs> thank you. I uh, don't believe it. I want to know. Johnny Carson never goes through this, you know. Hunts, you know. Everybody yes. knows Hunts was yes. right before Shut Up. Yeah. Was, what was it called before Hunts? Okay. Now we're going back. Mm. Let's pry the old memory. Boy. Mm. Do you folks happen to know that there was a one-time Jaguar dealership in Burlington? Not Short in the north end. <laughs> well, it was in Central City. Who owned the only Jaguar dealership in Burlington at one time? It wasn't there for very long. Who was the first Burlington alderwoman? Who became Burlington's first elected alderwoman? There's one. And I want to know, everybody knows Beansy's bus. We've oh, call it. he's calling Time. He's on call. Fireman on call. He's been told uh -oh. not to wear this thing <laughs> on the set, but he refuses. <laughs> okay, you guys, we can relax now. Yeah, We're staying he's... with the program. Okay, he's setting out for pizza? Hey, Herb, we only no. got a two-man operation All up right, there. You get know? the phone. Let's see. I got a Learjet that waits for me to scoop me out of here. Oh, back to the Battery Park. Everybody knows Beansy's bus. What's the real name of Beansy's bus? Good question. There was a real name for it. Nobody ever called it that. Uh, and Tom Crosby, uh, wait for all the slew of uh, Battery Park questions that I throw out before you call in. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, before Hunts, it was called the Opry. Absolutely right. Have you ever been in there, sir? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, it was a nice place. Yeah, it was uh, sort of like Hunts, but it was um, it goes back, what, uh, 10, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, anyway. And uh, I remember they had a group that came up from Wheeling, West Virginia, that touring uh, bluegrass country western group. Doc uh, Williams. That's the one. Doc Williams. He looked, uh, he was 80, but with that uh, toupee he had on, it made him look like, you know, 49. He was 80, 40 years ago. Yeah. He, he was born old. And they had foosball tables in there. Right. When it was the rage. And they had the there first large screen TV set in the back, didn't they? Yeah. Well, there was, I remember there was a back room where the foosball yes. tables were. They had, yeah. Where in back of what the stage was. Uh, I watched a closed circuit fight uh, back there. It, not a closed circuit. 
but it was uh, one Global of Ali's fight. fights. Ali fought Jimmy Young. Remember that fight? <laughs> that was highly disputed. Jimmy Young really won that fight. Hmm. He got to the shaft in that fight. I How saw many that fights in... did you see live in there? By the way, sir, here's a neat little boxing question. Okay. Who was the recipient of the fastest knockout in Golden Glove history in Vermont? Controversial, Herb. Um, he was see. on uh, his back in the shortest amount of time. When Con was this? This is uh, mid fifties, mid to late fifties. That was before my time. Okay, well, let's let's we'll throw it we'll out throw there. Throw that out there, but this controversy will hurt because one of the guys at the fire department is going to call up and say, okay. "No, you're That's wrong." That's all right. It's subject to a debate, but we got a nice blue cap for the gentleman who just called. Oh, great! Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Herb. Hello. Hash's Market on Manhattan Drive, where it used to be North Bend Street. Is yeah. that what you were looking for? Well, that's a name from the past, ma'am. I'll tell you that. I don't. What would that be the answer to? What? The, the market over on Manhattan Drive or North Bend Street. Well, that was a question from a long time ago. You must be receiving our program telepathically. I just asked the question, you who's sitting here. And what happened that to Herb and Al, by the way? I don't know. Hello, Herb. Well, you get hey, calls. Must be that new diet I'm on. Nobody yeah. sees me here. I leave no, that is right. Tasha's Market. Thank and, you very much. And the, and, and the guy would always walk the streets there. The, the guy, I can't, I never you know, know his name. He's still around. And you'll see him down by um, Ponderosa. I think he works in the uh, uh, associated uh, motel near the Ponderosa. Big black yeah. rim glasses. Yeah, I still see him down yep. there. Ma'am, uh, I got a question for you. Battery Park, are you still there? Uh, I think she hung up. I got Battery Park questions. Uh, you know the entrance by uh, Park Street or where going across the end of Pearl Street. There's a large entrance and it has these big stone things, the two mm -hmm. big stone things. There used to be objects on top of those stone entrances. What were on top of those stone entrances? And they were removed. And then there's this huge boulder that's there by the entrance also. It has a plaque on it. Where did that boulder come from? It wasn't there all the time. It was moved there. Well, the answer to that, uh, the two things, was that uh, Mayor Earhart and Elvis statues? Side by side? No. Would you just try to answer the phone? All That's right. hard enough for you. Hello, you're on the air. I have a question for Al. Yes. Are you married? Uh oh. <laughs> Is that you, Colin Rebo, over there? <laughs> no. No, being. I was when I left home. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I just want to tell you that your, your diet definitely works for you. See? You, I've never seen you look this great. Yay. It's unbelievable. Can you be embarrassed on live TV, Herb? You're blushing like crazy. You're matching the color of that brim. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. You sure we want to get off for two months here, Herb? You don't want to, but... We got line two? Hello, you're on the air. Now? Yeah. Hey, it's me again. Yeah. Was it the cannons on top of those stone things? They were not cannons. The big stone cannons? The stone pillars? No, it would be impossible to kick cannons, but it's associated with that. You're in the ballpark. Cannonballs? That's correct. There we go. I got two ads now. They were, no, they were, yes, yes, I we're going out for two. Give him another one of them lousy ones there. Well, here, they're sick of this orange color. <laughs> there you go. All right, thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, Al, I think your diet's working for you, too. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We got a call from Middlebury? Yeah. The Middlebury? The says we better get on this. I think. Middlebury? Yeah, it's a collect call, too. Oh, I wouldn't no. doubt it. It's the mouth, the of, the mouth south. of the He was supposed to be our guest host today. He stiffed us. But I said I would make an extra effort. I've got a whole handful of change here. Yeah. I want to know, I got a question for Al. I want to know how much he paid that girl to call in and say those nice things about him. <laughs> I'd like to know also. I never get calls get, like that. Give her one of these urinary track tapes. Yeah, you didn't even Kenny. give her anything. Incontinence. That was it's, a setup. I know it was a setup. Now, I got a way. question. Yeah. All right, now I discussed this with Al. In all your shows in the past year, mm -hmm. all right, it was never, ever brought up. There was a game that was played all the time at Roosevelt Park, and you never, ever discussed it. It was called off the fence. Yeah, but I didn't want to embarrass you because you were the only one in our group that couldn't reach the fence. I was the only guy that used to go up. It'd take us three hours. We'd play bunt ball all the way to Roosevelt Park. It'd take us three hours to get there. Yep. I was the only guy that took three hours to get to Roosevelt Park and the only guy that couldn't hit the fence. I don't know why I played the yeah. game. He played off the grass well, is what he played. You graduated to become probably the most renowned softball manager in this area. And in an outtake from our beginning and opening tape, uh, I asked George Rowland to explain why you were considered the 
probably the most ferocious, the, the most obnoxious. Is yes, the word. obnoxious was the term used. <laughs> uh, manager in the history of Continental League, and he, George told a story that you once went on the field and saw that there was a black umpire there. And it's kind of unusual in this area. Is and it? you remarked to George, you know, I, I don't think I've ever been thrown out by a black umpire. And you proceeded to get yourself heaved out of that game in no time sh uh, flat. Is that correct? Well, I've been thrown out by the best. Well, and the worst. Big Train Phelps, he wouldn't throw me out. He's the only one that wouldn't throw me out. Yeah. You know? Patient man. Yeah. But I got to tell you guys, you've done, you've done a tremendous job over the year with that show. And you deserve all the accolades you're getting. You've done you've done yeah. one tremendous job, yeah. and I'm impressed with the show. Well, thank you. And uh, silver tongue devil, Al, yeah. the dinner you promised me for saying that. Yeah. I'll, I'll meet you after the show. Okay. See ya. Bye. 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 The mouth of the South, calling all the way from Middlebury. And I think he lied to us. I think he's home watching and didn't <laughs> want to come on the show. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, this is uh, for both of you. Actually, uh, Herb, uh, the first woman. Uh, counselor or, or uh, alderman? Yes. Uh, was that Pat Novotny? Absolutely right. You know, you can't stump Al. The, this Al here is top notch. Go ahead. Al's are like that. Uh, the other thing I want to ask both of you is there was a junkyard that was owned down uh, the southern part of the south part of the uh, city. Right. The lake. There was a gentleman that owned that. Right. Do you remember his yeah. name? Yeah. Matt Snell. Max Snell. You're absolutely right. Boy, oh boy. And, we can't stump you. Yeah, but uh, didn't he play for the Jets? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I got more for you, too. Uh, Darn it, you're such a good contestant with us. Hang in here. Give us... Uh, I asked your wife this, so it's really not fair. Letty Park was so named in 1972, but there had been some uh, public uh, sentiment in 1971 to name it something else. Were you, are you familiar with what it was almost called? Well, the only guess I could take to that would be, uh, for that would be Karenko Park. No, that would be logical since that was their land. Yep. The answer that I had, I think, I don't think anybody would know this. It was almost called Wabanaki. Wabanaki, which in Abenaki, Indian language, means Thanksgiving. And for some reason, it was almost called Wabanaki. Well, there was a Wabanaki uh, golf course, right. as you know, down at yep. uh, Shelburne Road. Here's one for you, Al. Last one I'll try up for. What was the first Burlington or Vermont bank? that opened up a branch office. And where was that branch office located? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's, it's in the confines of Burlington. Uh, and I'd like, that's, that's a good question, if I, I say so myself. I'll have to pass on that. I, my guess at that would be the Howard National Bank, uh, but I'm not sure. No, no, that is not one. Uh, and finally, Al, let's ask you this one. Uh, who is a local gentleman who wrote lyrics, I think the lyrics to a song that was recorded by Perry Como. Uh, I would You're think that would with it. Bernard Zeitz. You're right, Bernie really? Zeitz. I don't know, the, does anybody know the song that Perry Como recorded that had uh, Bern, Bernie Zeitz's lyrics? That'd be interesting to know. Uh, hmm. you'll have to, I'll have to pass on that one. That, uh, he, he, he wrote many songs. Yes, he did. Yeah, he's a yeah. very talented gentleman. Absolutely. Done good. Alan, you did very well, and uh, I think uh, we're going to reward you this time. How about the, this, gum, how about the candy drops here? We haven't done it. Candy the drops, blue, they're back for in, sure, the, the, and also the light blue and white hat. The candy drops sound yeah. great, and I'll <laughs> appreciate the hat. We you guys have a great show. You Thank could, you, You've got to add this uh, rubber frog here, but we only got one left. Uh, his wife doesn't let him get out of the house much. <laughs> oh, I'll take a guess on the bank. I'll say the Burlington Savings Bank out on North Avenue. You're right. You're absolutely right, yeah, and the year hot. was 1955 when that hot. branch opened. Yeah. Hmm. And that's, that's enough, Al. You're wiping me out right. of questions. Go to it. Thank Thanks. you. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. We've got to ask this question, Herb, because it's our favorite two questions. Yeah. Before it, so people can still call in. Yeah. You want to ask the, the, the garbage truck question and, well, that and was the parade a, question? Well, but the, it's our favorites, Herb. Well, that's my favorite question. That's how this program got started, actually. It was... Uh, we were talking around a couple of guys uh, bouncing off the idea of perhaps having a game board uh, after this same type of local trivia. So the most interesting question that I could come up with was to name the nicknames of the two fellas that rode in back of the rubbish pickup truck that roamed around the old North End specifically back in the 40s and early 50s. Give me the two nicknames of those fellas that were in the back of the rubbish pickup truck. 
That's a good question. And the other favorite one, and you have to think about this one now. When you went to a parade anywhere in Burlington, how did you positively, absolutely know that the parade was over? Without yeah. a doubt. There was something that, without a doubt, told you that the parade was over. Okay, we're going back to the phones. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, I was listening to you, and I just live on North End for 18 years. My parents lived down there. Right. Um, now, which rubbish truck were you speaking about? There were two of them. There was Blair's that I know of from the North End, mm -hmm. and there was the city sanitation department. Well, I'm talking of neither of those, actually. This one was Snyder's. Okay. Snyder's uh, rubbish truck. But um, do you remember uh, the old North End? There used to be a garbage truck mm -hmm. that used to go around. And Joe, I'm trying to think. I, can't, I keep forgetting Joe's last name, who rode uh, uh, on the garbage truck. When they I, had the, I think I'm right. When they I? had the pails on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there was another old man, another oldish man, too. Well, see, these two fellows that rode the back of the truck I'm talking about, we as young kids would yell at them, and uh, they would get very angry and would start to yell at us. And uh, it was a game that we played. Yeah. Uh, and we were looking for the two very distinct, uh, if you pardon the pun. Uh, <laughs> Hold it a second here. <laughs> well, those I don't know because I was born in 1950, but I do know that... Um, well, you came up with two other... Uh, Rubbish pickup people. Right. right? That was okay. Good. One was for Blair, and the other one was a garbage truck. Just picked mm -hmm. up garbage. Well, ma'am, here's another associated question. Before it becomes garbage, we have to have food sometimes. Now, do you remember the name of the traveling grocery store? This has been asked a couple of times. This yep. is another good one of question. our first questions. Yep. What was it? Yeah, name? the Yum Yum truck. The Yum Yum? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Now this was actually a fellow. He had a permanent market, but he also brought a traveling market into the Okay, I know who that was, and the only one I can think of, Salmon. But I, he was an old man. Yeah, he had a very away a, a on his truck, voice. and he used to stop, and he used to have a scale on it. That's right. Yep. Yes. Awnings on both sides that he lift up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. He was. A, I think he was. Um, he was an American. Oh, yeah, I think so. Was he? Yeah, I think so. Okay, but, but it's not very American. old. Yes, yeah. Yep. But yeah. he had tomatoes on that thing. He had oh, yeah. cucumbers yeah, right. and the whole bit. Yep. Ma'am, we've got a lovely hat for your participation. <laughs> we thank you very much for calling. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. And that was actually one of our first questions, yeah. and the, somebody got it right off the bat, and, and we were reminding, when the Mouth of the South called there, reminded yeah. us that we'd, we'd give one, one of our group a nickel to go buy a tomato when we steal 50 yeah. cents worth of apples on the other side of the truck. Yeah. But you don't want to turn us into that. We're going again. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, that was skim milk and kissy. <laughs> that's right. That's uh, actually, right. Actually, you, know, you got get almost a reverse order there. Yeah, you, you and know. it was uh, Eno Storage Adore Market. Boy, yes. she's knocking off our questions like crazy. Wow. She hasn't got the parade question, though. Oh, right. what was the uh, kissy and skim milk's uh, last name? Real names. names. Kissy Allen, and I don't know what Skim Milk's name was. Well, somebody yeah, will we're know. We're still open then. Yeah. And you don't know how you could tell when the parade was over. Don't le hold that one, man. Let somebody else no, try at that no, one. No. No. Uh, I also want to know. We went down to the south then. Uh -huh. I can't let this one go by. We used to go down and play ball down at South Park, and I would hear a very lovely voice crooning out there. And I, I always say, who, who is that? And I see a guy, a young guy, glasses and a, and a work type hat on. He was crooning. I want to know his nickname and his real last name. And our producer here has an insert here. What? He was at Marola's game, you mean? No, at South Park. The fellow lived oh. in the South End. No, and I don't know. But I know that you you played on, on uh, uh Marola's. One time, I, I, they made me fill in. Right, Marola's. right. Everybody filled in. Everybody did. I was in, in <laughs> clothes like this. And I, Hank Grotowski, I'll never forget, was playing second base. And I was playing with suit and tie. Yeah. First base. Yeah. He threw a ball at me. I had to catch it or else would have drilled a hole right between my eyes. I remember Carr riding into first base and coming up with his white mustache and his hair all brown. There's a, a good name, <laughs> a, a part-time participant, was uh, the late photographer, Mr. Carr. You're absolutely right. right. And who was uh, uh, Hank Rakowski's uh, brother-in-law that used to play for the Rams? That was, that was the late uh, uh, Joe Chabelli. Chabelli. Okay. Yep. Oh, right. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. You got fans remembering your softball career, which is a pretty hard thing to do. Thanks a lot. <laughs>
Hello, you're on the air. Hello, Mr. Eno was a traveling... Ah, oh, she's doing it again. Now, I hate to be no, 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 no. but one call per show are the rules. I told her the two that she should One do. call per show. The producer. With Mr. Eno. Yes, you're right. Now let somebody else participate. They're laughing at me for this having to happen again. Let's solve some more questions out, Al. Okay, got to go. More questions. Hold it. What? I was watching the monitor here, and I want you to know, they what? said I got my girth from Al's friendship. <laughs> That's right. But I want to show you, they're not lying. And as the next, as the next manager of Al's French Al's ice cream softball, there you have it right there. Yeah, I'm responsible for those. Uh, I know titles, you are, so. and you're going to pay for it, too. <laughs> okay, we're going. Little, you going to ask another question, or can I answer the phone? Answer the phone. Thank you very much. Yeah, they've gone away. Yeah, you lost them. Hello. Hi. Yes. Okay, Herb, uh, Skim Milk's real name. Yes. Buddy Hayes. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now, what did he always say? When you started to get on his case, he would always do a distinctive thing. Or he'd have a good answer for you right off the bat. Do you remember what he would do? Growl, Herb. Well, you would growl, yeah, but he would always show you his badge and say that his <laughs> brother is a sheriff. <laughs> and you don't mess with him because he'll put you in a clink. <laughs> And it was true. I guess his uh, brother was this uh, Sheriff Hayes. But you're correct. Is this Hoysala, my darling? Huh? I thought this was Hoysala, but maybe I'm mistaken. Have you got any questions for us? Yeah, Herb. What was, uh, okay, the actual house? <laughs> it's Hoysala. Okay, of the Ethan Allen homestead. Actual house. What was it before they restored it? Man, what was it? It was, uh... I remember it as a farmhouse. It was just a decrepit house. It was... Uh, it was no, it wasn't decrepit. No. People used to live there. I don't know. You mean somebody you want, looking for the owner of it or what was it used for? Well, it was, it was a duplex. Man, I didn't know that. I do know. Here's another good question. Uh, I think the address is like 34 Blodgett Street, right near the corner of Blodgett and North. There's a straight that, uh, a house that's been rehabbed, but it was moved from its original location. Where was that house originally? Uh, was it, uh... No. What breakwater? You're right. Hershey, yeah, you're right. Geez. If they're doing Man. high fives and everything there, I can Boy, hear. you get a hat for that one. That was yeah. out in the breakwater. Now, that house, the history on that was it was supposed to have been moved to Buffalo, New York. Now, how anybody can make a mistake of delivering the house, not to Buffalo, New York, but to Blodgett Street in Burlington. They, that one day, lake is just good as yeah, another one, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for calling with those answers and questions. We All appreciate right. it. Thank you. Yep. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I think I got the answer to the question about how you knew the parade was over. All right. uh, okay, be careful. This is a tricky one. Okay, I think it was because Georgie Boutin would come along with a fire hat on at the end. Nice uh, pass. Close, you're so in the ballpark. You're close. You got the right idea. Okay. <laughs> nice try. Georgie usually be kind of directing the traffic <laughs> for the parade. <laughs> He wasn't the reason why. Why we have you there, sir? That's so <laughs> silly question. There was always a mean guy. I thought he was a mean policeman on the motorcycle that used to take great joy in coming near us little kids that were just sitting on the stoop there, you know, along the parade route, trying to take our feet off. He tried to go over our feet. Uh, who was that fellow on the I motorcycle? Know, I know who it was. You're older than I am. You're before my time. Well, somebody will was, remember that. Was he the thing. same person who was the last Harley uh, tricycle? Same police? one. Officer in the city of Berlin. Same one. And I'm surprised nobody's come up with that. I'm mean... surprised Station Four. They're sitting out there going, <laughs> "Hey, I know who that is. It's my father." Well, we, this call is a good one. Banal for the one that came up with Georgie Boutet. That's close. It know, was so. close, but not the right answer. No. But he could have got a hospital strength if he was. Yeah, little... true. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I got a question to ask you. Uh huh. You know the street, the house that you just said that 34 Project Street. Yeah. It's 22 Vodget Street. I grew up at the house. Is that right? Yeah. No more. Oh, man, well, I have you. Well, 34 is close. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, are there any haunted houses in Burlington that you're familiar with or anything that, you know, that somebody said the house was haunted? Yeah, it was. I had nightmares in it. No kidding. Oh, yeah. I grew up in it. My parents grew up. My mother grew up in it. And then I guess my grandparents gave it to my parents for an anniversary present or a wedding present or something. That's uh. something. And I grew up in the house, and my parents had sold it about probably seven, eight years ago. And the fellow has rehabbed that yeah. house now, yeah? Huh. 
Isn't that something? It's a small world where a viewer who has lived in the house that we give a question out on. And she gave me at least the right address, yeah. too. You got the right city, anyways. Well, man, thank you for calling, and that's worthy of a hat from the old Stump the Chumpers here. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, bye. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. I've got the answer to the parade question. It was Bernie Lovejoy rides his bike. At right. least Station 2 is alive and well over That's there. That's right, and the last Harley motorcycle cop was Ledoux. Right Boogaloo's awesome. out there right now watching cartoons instead of watching our show, I bet you. No, he's not on duty today. Did he, no? did he get your toes at all? Man, he came close to me a couple of times. <laughs> no. Mean to do that, you know? Who mean is about You guys got to come up with some new questions, too. This oh, is a review. If you'd watch the show at the beginning, you Huckleberry, you'd realize that we're doing a year in review. Oh, okay. Well, you are one of the... <laughs> Butch actually answered one of our first questions. What was the first question you answered? The very first show. Bernie, about Bernie Lovejoy? No, no, on Church Street. What was the name of the uh, fire station on Church Street? I don't know. I've answered so many years. Oh, oh. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds like it's... Where's such... Sager's Market? Where was Sager's Market in the old north end? Yeah, it was originally Kalad where Kaladney's is. No. Well, come He'll on. He'll lie anyway. Well, there was another one at the, the top of uh, uh, Intervale Avenue. Uh, that's it. Okay. See, so, he's going to lie because he's a, he grew up with Berto, too. So. Well, he grew up here in Burlington. Here's one. I'm asking for everybody. Maybe you'll have first shot. I want to know the names of three Burlington lads that went on to play basketball at St. Michael's College. They played basketball at St. Mike's. Three. Only three? Three that I can think of. Maybe there's a fourth. Herb, you can't ask him a basketball question. He's only about this tall. Well, He's only about 5'1", maybe. Hey, all fair. With he asked new questions. With his sneakers on. That's a pretty well, ask him what he can answer here. Hey, I want my hat. <laughs> well, he wants a hat. Give him a hat. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. You have a question? Yeah, I got Fine. one here for you. Now, he wouldn't know that. He never played the guitar. I want to know who, who gave free guitar lessons at the uh, boys' club. Good question. Uh, huh. What was the first X-rated movie in Burlington? Deep Throat. No, no, no. No, 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 no. And, Way before that. And the reason given for closing the theater down. That's yep. a beautiful thing. Now, you think back on that one there. Okay, if I get the answer, I'll call you back. All righty. Bye -bye. See you later. The fire department's on the job. Yeah, well, Not right this moment, but they're, yeah. at least they're watching. You know, back in the 20s, hold on. Back in the 20s, this was... What are all these things that go across the top of the screen? What's the significance of all that? The significance is to try to uh, jar the memories of Burlingtonians in terms of old places, people, things in Burlington. And so that maybe they can come up with questions and... That's Give us a, their thoughts. That's what a harassing things. producer looked with yes. his shoes on. And it's also because the staff here was not considerate enough to give us any other graphics. So I contributed this this morning. What? Yes. Oh. So uh, now we got a fight going. Okay, next. Hey. Anyway, back in the, in the 20s, 20s <laughs> this was a real booming uh, industrial center, and we had the Union Station down there, mm -hmm. railroad station. I want to know the total number of trains daily, freight and passenger that arrived and left Union Station at the height of the railroad industry, which is 1926. I'll give you within five, folks. I want to know the number, total number of trains that arrived and left from Burlington's Union Station. Here. Yeah. that so? Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Al. Yeah. For members only. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Head Rider and Queen City Bus. Oh, whoa, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Motorcycle guy, the Red Rider. We had the Red Rider and a Green Hornet, we used to call him. Yeah, what was the, what was the real name? Oh, God, I don't remember that. Oh, God, is close. <laughs> what are you going to have a late well, night? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got, how many questions did you answer? Here? I had Queen City Bus. For so members only is right. Queen and City Bus for Beansies. Queen City Bus, what's the specialty? Uh, yeah, see, I have to throw Heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> Sliders. Al, Al, uh, Al Burgers. I don't know. What don't you know? know? That, okay, we'll leave that one open. They had a special leave, which nobody ever buys there either, by the way. I might I, I could have a good reason, I might add. Listen, when are you going to have the Lakeside night? Oh, we're coming to that. Lakeside is going to be, we're going to take a two-month uh, summer. One, uh, maybe. Well, maybe one, maybe none. But well, when we come back, we're going to do Lakeside. I'm trying to do a contingent of people down there so we can stump. Is this another guy about five foot one, wears a suit a lot? A little taller. He used to sweep up lettuce that... Sweet Play Valley up. Fruit. Used to pump gas at Rick Sonoco? Got it. Until the explosion? Yep. See, we need <laughs> questions from you. We need questions, good ones. We're running them out, you know? I mean, uh, uh, he's a man asking. my questions for Lakeside night. Okay. Lakeside. Well, listen, let me just give a little history with that uh, for members only. Is that the name of it? 
He could have easily snuck in because he was only about three foot they tall. They had two that was federal right. guys. Yeah. They had two federal guys that came in and watched the show. Uh huh. Watched the whole show, I might add, and then closed the theater down. And this is the reason. Hey, sir, wait. Oh, don't leave that easily. Yeah, wait. You gotta come in here. Come here. You come in for your hat. You gotta come in and participate. They're coming in. The <laughs> windows are crying out loud. Uh, <laughs> the reason they gave for closing down the theater was that it was too close to existing schools and churches. And that be the truth. That's why they did it. That was at the state theater. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely correct. What was the sub? It was about as X rated as, oh, as it would, a cartoon now. It but would be rated PG. You see that now. Yeah. How many times did you see it, George? Hey, Herb, I want to tell you one thing. The only reason you have a partner is for my fantastic driving, because I almost ran him into a tree one time. Well, shucks. You mean I, I was almost able to go out alone here then, huh? You would have gone alone. Well. I'll call you back on Lakeside night, guys. Okay, Thanks. George. Thanks. Bye. We have someone, gentlemen, that came and pick up us out, really. We, we'd appreciate you participating. Just a simple, just a question. Can we try a one-on-one? -on -one? You got a hat. We promise you two more hats. Two more hats if you answer a question for us. You aren't dressed any worse than Herb with that no, stupid come on tie in, come that on doesn't in. We've got plenty of room. <laughs> plenty of room, sir. How much this time have we got, by the way? I don't know. Completely unrehearsed. Hi, I'm Herb. We got about two minutes. Brian. Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian Kling. My folks used to run Brian, the show. Brian's the, and I saw the picture, the most recent picture um, that you contributed. Last week. Uh, here's one for you. Right next to where your father's business was, was a, another business. What was it called? You mean the Hood Garage? Uh, uh, no, in between. You see, your father's business was, was Freylex, right? Right, Freylex Photo. Set back. Now, right next to it was another little building in front. It's now a house. Little house. Right next to it, same side of the street. Same side of the street. Jeez, I don't remember this. When was that? This was all 40s and 50s, early 50s. Um, Let me tell you a story. That's that old, Herb. We uh, only got about a minute and a half, you know. Two is that right? Two. Yeah. Yes. Oh, time flies. It was a little delicatessen. That was um, uh, Mincer's delicatessen. Okay. A little delicatessen. Um, before Freilix, they had a deli there. Well, you're right. right. Freilix was originally in front. Right. But then it moved to the back. Okay. But it's not very, I misled you. It was this very same uh, site, maybe. Okay. Um, but we appreciate it. Uh, how about uh, I got one more question? I got another call here, too, here. But we appreciate it. You're uh, wonderful to participate with us, and uh, it's good of you to come in here. Am I kicked off now? No, you can stay right here. Maybe you can answer a question. They throw at okay. us. Yeah, hold on. Hello, you're on the air. Absolutely. I have a question for your guest, Mr. Clay. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Clay. Yeah. What year did John Coltrane die? Ooh, you know your jazz, Is, huh? is this uh, David Beckett? Oh, stop that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, 1967. Um, which horns did he play? Which horns? Uh, saxophone, of course. Which, sir, caller, which uh, famous jazz artist appeared on the 4th of July at uh, Bayside? You've got me. What year? Well, in the 40s, that was a late Louis Armstrong. The 4th of July was his birthday, and he appeared at Lakes, uh, at uh, Bayside. Never heard of Actually, him. Actually, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased in it. Did, were you at that show? No, I wasn't. I, <laughs> it may be a lie. That was a story told to me, and it was a good story anyway. Actually, you know, they've recently discovered that the 4th of July was not actually Armstrong's birthday, although that legend persists for and has for, you know, 50 years. Yep. Right. Yeah, that good has to be. Well, it is a good story. All right. Uh, any other questions? Any other? Any other? Anybody holding on the line for that? No. One? We'll throw they got a the producers holding up our other line there. Tell me, tell me, were the uh, were, were the list of uh, establishments at the top of the screen things we were supposed to identify? No, they were just to jar your memory in oh. terms of uh, information that could be food for thought. Food for thought. All right. Thanks for calling. We got to wrap this uh, this Thank you. Uh, show up, but we really appreciate oh, you no joining problem. us. And maybe in a future show, you can come in and sure. uh, gather okay. some questions for us. We appreciate it. He botched his first question, though. Well, but anyway, okay. Look at <laughs> folks. This is going to wrap it up for the July edition of our show. We are taking a one month hiatus. We're not going to be here next month. We're going to prep for future shows unless you don't want us around anymore. Please call in or write to station. Be on their mailing list so that you know when we're on and you can enjoy the other programming supplied by Channel 17. So. For Herb and Al and our guest, Mr. Kling, we want to thank all of you for joining us on the July version of Stump the Chumps, and we'll see you in September. That's the name of a song. We're still Ooh, on. Almost timed it right. <laughs>